Okay, good morning, everybody. Everybody, good morning, good morning. Let's get uh, rolling on this. We're going to do our conference call here on uh, the indicator and strategy. Uh, we do have, uh, like I said, a um, right now we have a failure setting up. If you're trading the ES right now, we have a failure setting up at this level. You can see we have a large oscillator that is below. We've had this morning, we just had a failure to the upside at 730 this morning. Uh, before we roll into uh, our conference call, large oscillator got above 65 bear. Small oscillator stayed above 40 bull. So there's your entry as far as that goes. That's a failure trade. This exact bar pull in that happened at seven uh, about an hour ago, um, and now a failure is developing right now as we speak on the ES. We have the large oscillator that is below, right there, below 40. Our small oscillator is below bear 65. You can see it right here. If we get a pull-in bar, red pull-in bar, and the small oscillator stays below 65, we have a qualified failure trade on that. So a great job for you guys picking these up uh, this week. I know I see a lot of you guys send me uh, charts and also post in the room. So good job picking those up. Let's go with the um, the indicator um, the indicator and the, oops, let me put this back over here. The indicator strategy that we're getting out to you guys. Um, let's go to the indicator first. We're recording this. I'll at least be about a half hour today on this. And then I want to start stalking setups, start watching for some, uh, uh, setups you know I love my failure trade it's one of my favorite setups that's been developed over the last 30 uh, plus years um, this is a failure trade let's go look at S&P's action uh, we had CPI news yesterday let's look at the signals that would that was generated by this indicator and this strategy that um, that we're getting out to our members here so you can see this is these arrows will fire when specific uh, we have four setups in the room, so whatever setup you're looking at, whether it be a failure trade, whether it be a first wave trade, a slingshot trade, or a Momo trade, you can dictate which trade you want to see when it fires. So yesterday, uh, right after news, we had a failure trade that fired. So this is the indicator portion of it. Let's go over it. The indicator portion, I made it very simple for you guys. I made the first wave, the slingshot, the Momo, and the failure trade into toggle switches. So you can see failure trade is checked. So I do have an alert that is on it. So the alert uh, on your computer, you can change the wave alert to two, three, four, even put your own wave file in there so you can change the sound. But when this arrow fired on the failure trade yesterday, right after news, um, 40 seconds after news re was released, we have this arrow that automatically fires on the failure trade. So this is, if you just want an indicator-based system where you want to see my four setups fire with arrows, you can do that uh, with my, the indicator. The indicator is very simple to understand. They're simple toggle switches. If you want to see, let's say, a slingshot, you just click on slingshot, apply. Now it's going to get the slingshots that uh, appear as the market's moving along in real time. So now only slingshots will fire off um, that will be up, that will fire on the level. So sling, so there was our failure trade. You see it's no longer there, the arrow. This is a slingshot. It happened at 9 o'clock yesterday. Had a big move down to the downside on the S&P. And then here's a slingshot move up at 1046, slingshot at 12 o'clock, and slingshot at 1221. So what you can see is you can see you can if you do the indicator with the alert system, these arrows will fire based upon uh, what you want to see. So if you want to see, let's say, a failure, you want to see a slingshot and a failure, then you can click on both. You apply. Now it's going to get this failure trade right here too. You're going to see a red arrow fire here with all the slingshots. So let's say that you, that's your two favorite setups in the room. Well, now you can do that uh, with the indicator, with the uh, alert system. Now, 
you can see it fired the um, the slingshot. I mean, the failure trade was here. That's my failure short. You know, one of my favorite setups is I like the failure setup, and I like it to go right into the into a slingshot uh, right there. So these two are really nice setups uh, there. So now I got the slingshot activated, and I got the um, slingshot and the first wave activated. So you can see you can do pretty much anything you want. Now, let's say you just wanted the first wave. Let me uncheck these. The, a first wave is a first wave slingshot. It's not just the first reversal bar. It has to have a slingshot getting above my bear or bull zone. So now if I just want to look for a first wave, you know, you know I, Thomas, I know you like doing the 135, right, on that first wave on the NASDAQ futures. You would put that first wave on here with a slingshot, Thomas, and it would produce only first waves. So first waves would be when you go red to green or green to red, or red to green or green to red, it looks for that first wave. So you can see uh, these were nice trades that happened. I'd only formed two from uh, what, 8 o'clock in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You only had two trades on the first wave, but they were very productive trades. So let's say that you want to do uh, just the Momo trade then. Then you could just uncheck that in Momo. You click Momo. Momentum is where the market's already moving, so one will form. This is a momentum trade, a pause in the market. So you're only going to get an arrow, I mean a, a signal uh, that is alert system when a momentum is coming in the market, which I believe this is only so only one momentum trade happened, and that was at 1217. So let's say that you want to do all of them. You said, I want to see all four setups come up. Um, so all four setups come up. There you click them all, and you hit, now you hit apply. Now all four setups are going to come up. Now what Phil uh, talked about, which he makes a good point, uh, we, we could change these into different colors um, for different setups. So I am looking at that right now. Uh, but you can see now if you have all four set up, you had your failure trade here, first wave slingshot, first wave slingshot, slingshot, momentum, slingshot. So if you want all my setups to come up, you can do that. But like I said, if, if you, I, I envision some of you just wanting to look for maybe my, my two top setups. That I, my favorite one is the failure trade that I stock on the NASDAQ futures. And in fact, I don't, I don't really like any of the momentum trades on the NASDAQ futures because they're so fast. And so the failure trades, it gets you in before a nice productive move and also the slingshot. So if you just want to do a combo like this, it's very, it can be very productive on these different markets because they, they both of them, they're, they're, they, they have to be qualified. The slingshot has to be above 65, the large oscillator, small oscillator above 40 bull for, for buys. And this cell, it had that large oscillator had to be below, it had to be below 40, and then it had to be the small oscillator below 65, or this will not fire. It's already pre-coded into the code. So that maybe that's the combination that you guys want to do if you guys want this combination to fire off as far as that goes. So uh, you, the, this is very simple, the strategy, I mean, the indicator. Um, I, you can change your Unirenko, but I just leave it like it is. You know, I like the Unirenko 165, 65. The only, well, the only way I would change this is I would put this down into a 40 if I use the 13 Renko. You know I love the 13 Renko for failure trades on the S&P. So I would change this to a 40, okay, if you want to catch the 13 Renkos. Okay, this is a, I have up right now on the S&P, I got a 125.25 up here right now. But if you want to change it down to 113, what I would do, um, it's only when you do a 113 chart. I would change this trend filter to a 14040 like I do in the room. This is the only time I change this trend filter if I go down to my 13 check down. So that's why I want to do this recorder conference call so you guys understand this before you get the strategy is that if you want to do 13 pull-ins, then I would look I would change this from 40 to 40. Okay? Other than that, if you use a 25, like you see all these charts I sent out to you if the Nasdaq futures you get so many failure trades on the 20 and 25 on the NASDAQ futures. What I like to do, I like to do 13, 20, and 25 
right beside each other on the NASDAQ futures. So when you see one come up, um, they, they, they uh, on a failure trade, for example, we just had one on the NASDAQ futures here on the 20. So this is a failure trade right there. That's a failure. So the strategy will pick this up. It, the large oscillator gets above 65, and then the small oscillator has to stay above bull 40, which it did. And so that's an entry at this level. So you can the indicator will fire this arrow here for you automatically, an arrow knowing it's a failure trade if you have failure failure and then it'll fire there if you had the first wave it would have fired this arrow here for you it's a fire in on the first wave on this trade right now with the nasdaq futures but you know you can like i said you can dictate how you want to do it um on what where you want the arrow to fire i do have an alarm system so let's say that you just wanted only failures to fire on the nasdaq futures because they're very productive like i said you're getting around 10 15 trades depending on the Rico size you use uh, on these um, on the 20 and 25 and the 13 Rico on the NASDAQ futures. So uh, this is a failure trade. So if you just want this zero fire here, what you would do is, is that you would just put, you would just put under the indicator, you would just click. And I'll show you in a second on the, on the NASDAQ futures. I just want to go over this real quick. So you would just hit failure trade, and then it's only going to fire the failure trades, or it's only going to fire the slingshots. Whatever you put in, you know, that will only fire the failure trade there. Okay, so it's very simple to understand. Uh, let's go back to this indicator but before I go to the strategy. I do have a PDF coming with this. Um, we are testing this. We do have a member, a long-term member, that I just got over to the file to make sure there's no errors in this. What we don't want to happen is getting a file out and seeing errors fire uh, for you guys and all this stuff. So he will be testing this with me, um, Phil, and uh, Gerald's getting that out to him. Um, so he's going to be uh, testing this with me also. And then once it's done and we see there's no errors or anything on the strategy, and he likes what we got for you members too, where you know it's being member tested also, then we're going to get this out to you. So, um, but I just want to show you the, the it's easy to understand to, to, to get these to fire these arrows. Um, so let's go top to bottom. So we have this 165.65. That, that's a standard you should use unless you're using a 13 Renko. Like I said, if you use a 13 Renko, put this down to 140.40. The speed period and speed candles. You can, I, I put these to off right now, but you can turn these on and I'll show you when the rolling position traders are being caught. So let's say that you want do, to do a, you know, a 12 and see candle four fire they will fire on there for you with the arrows arrows that fire so now you you do have your speed candles come up coming up here to see if the rolling position traders being caught we like opposite color speed bars um, it's just for indicator use pretty much only but you can see right here this is a first wave sell so let's say if I have my um, oops I have this turned on my slingshot these work really good with slingshots Let's say I got my slingshot turned on to my failure and I apply this. So now if I get a wrongly positioned uh, trader speed bar with an arrow that fires, you have a really high probability trade because you're catching what that does. Those bars come up. I call them speed bars. It catches exhaustion points. So you see a red speed bar here. Then you get your arrow. There's a high probability trade. You get a green speed bar here with an arrow, high probability trade. You get a speed bar here. That's a great failure trade catches the rolling position trader. So you can turn that on and off as an added bonus to see if you want for that additional exhaustion indicator. If you want to turn it off, I just put it at 17 and zero and now just turn right back off. Okay, so you can turn that off if you'd like. And then you hit apply. Now I'll just show the arrows. So let's go back to the alert. So the alerts will fire whenever the arrow fires. So let's say you have a slingshot and failure on only right here and that's all you have on there well what's going to happen is is that these arrows that fired yesterday this is yesterday's morning action on the 25 on the ES these arrows that fire will sound off on your speaker only when they come up so now we've got we have synergy now between the arrows firing that you want to fire and then you have synergy with the wave file you want to change now you can change it to like I said 
You can change it to a two, which gives you a different sound. Just put a two in here, put a two in there, put a three in here. If you want it to beep, you know, put a four, whatever you want to do. It's not that annoying sound that we have right now on the current strategy. All right, so that's a WAV file. You can adjust your entries on, I have it preset. So the failure is already preset. The Momo is preset, Slingshot is preset, the first wave is preset. The first wave is preset for this. If the oscillator goes below 80, comes back up through my bull, my, if it goes down through my bull of uh, 880, comes back up through 65, this arrow is going to fire. If the cells are going to be, you see it's not at the reversal bar like we have now because those sometimes get stopped out. You know, so, um, you know, more often than using the, going through the bull or bear. So what I did with this strategy is I, I have it pulling in where you want it to pull in. I have it pulled in going above the 65, uh, below below 40 bull to fire the arrow and above 65 here. If you want to adjust that, you can adjust that um, according to, um, I have an 80 right here, but you can adjust the overbought oversold. So what you want to do is you can adjust your overbought oversold and that will directly affect your slingshot trades and your first wave pull-ins. It won't affect your Momo at all, but it will affect your slingshots getting in a little earlier or getting a little bit later in the move if you want. So you can adjust that. I have them preset what I show in the room already, but if you wanted to adjust your arrows on a slingshot to go a little bit later in the move or a little bit earlier in the move, you would just um, adjust your overbought, oversold. You, you, you would adjust this. So instead of going below 80 and, and uh, uh, going through 80 and going down through 40, you know, you can adjust it to wherever you want to adjust it. So th those are there also. Uh, but everything's preset for you if you don't want to adjust anything. The failure trade has this. It says specifically this. And, and, and you can use this as a uh, the strategy to, to manage your trades also as a trade management system. Or if you find a Renko size that you like to use, you can let it run across the board. Totally up to you guys. The failure says specifically this. For this failure to work, it has to be below for cells. It, the large oscillator has to be below 40. And the small oscillator on the retracement, this retracement that came here on the ES, it has to stay below 65 bear. If it does not, this arrow will not fire, period. Okay? It will not fire. So I made them specific rules for each of the waves. I mean, for each of them. So know that this is built in. The first wave here, let's say that uh, the slingshot's there. If I just do slingshots, it specifically says on the slingshot, it has to get above 80 for buys or has to get below 20 cells. And this guy shoot up through my bull zone, my bear zone of 65 for buys, uh, down through my bull zone of 40, or these arrows will not fire. They will not fire. You see they're not getting at the first red bar reversal like our current strategy have. What we found in the feedback from members inside and outside the room on different markets, that they're more reliable once the market gets in motion. All right, so make sure you guys are aware of that. Oops, we'll go to the strategy in a second. All right, so there's that. So if you look at, uh, so let's get down through here. So and that's pretty much it. Because uh, everything, what I wanted to do with this, uh, this is the first time we've ever put all of our top four strategies and uh, indicators together in one package where you can, where it's easy, a toggle switch. Uh, the feedback I got from members just way too complicated in the past about the strategy and the indicator. I made it simple. It's as simple as a toggle switch. That's it. You just want to see failures, toggle switch the indicator on, you'll get an alert for failures that come up. You know of all the charts. I send you tons of charts week after week after week on the failure trade. It's one of my favorite trades because the failure trade, it likes to get in to a position before a big run opposite colors of our zones. Our zones have been back tested, uh, like I said, through an artificial intelligence machine, through um, our, our, our previous member, Tina, that helped us out. Uh, she helped us out with this. So these have been back tested 30 years. So we know that these zones are really, really good at reversing price. Well, that's why the failure works so well, because knowing that data that these zones can reverse price, what happens when they don't reverse price, right? That's why we use these failure trades, these oscillators, to get in before the big slingshot to, to, to get in. So I envision, like I said, a lot of you guys, I see a lot of you guys uh, doing a combination like this because one of my favorite setups, I talk about this all the time on the microphone, 
Um, I like to see a failure trade go right into a slingshot. What that means, NASDAQ had one just here, okay? This is a failure trade right into the slingshot. There's my failure trade, and then we go right into a major slingshot for a big push up. I like them actually when they come on the first one the best. This is a, this is a momentum trade to the upside, but I like seeing the failure trade to get the started on this NASDAQ live one right here. But I love slingshots. Your first slingshot that comes up after failure trade is typically pretty productive. So I can see you traders doing this combination where they fire, these arrows fire automatically and you get an alert system for that, okay? So let's get into the strategy a little bit. And so, so the indicator, like I said, if you want all the arrows to fire off, you know, whatever combination you want. But that's pretty much the extent of the indicator. Very simple uh, to understand. It's a simple toggle switch. That's all. Simple toggle switch. You want to just see failures? Fine. Put failures. You just want to see slingshots or momos or first wave. You just want to see first wave trades? No worries. First wave trades, it's going to happen where it's a slingshot first wave. And because, like I said, it's, just, it's not the first reversal bar. It's after you turn green to red or red to green on trend change. And then it will look to get in above that bull threshold uh, right here. You see how it's not the first reversal bar because those could turn into failure trades, right? A failed slingshot is a failure trade. A failed slingshot is a failure trade. So I made the slingshots qualified. So had two productive uh, arrows there. All right, let's get into the strategy now. So if we move into the strategy, I made, I made this the same exact way as I made the indicator, the same format. So let's get into the strategy, same format. So right here, like I said, if you're going to trade off a 113.13 uh, uh, failure trades, I would change this to 140.40. That's why we do these conference calls. So when you get this after we're done testing it, and uh, our member is testing this also, once if, so you know if you trade a 13, that's why we do these recorded conference calls, change this to a 40, 140.40. If you do a 125.25 or 120, or 130, 30, you don't have to change this. It's a longer Uni Renko size, okay? Um, I have this turned off right here, but you can turn these on on the strategy too. You don't have to have the indicator running if you're running the strategy. The strategy will fire the arrows uh, automatically for you. Also, if you just want to run the strategy by itself. Okay, so same thing. I have failure trade clicked here. I have an alert system. You really don't need the alert system here because it's going to fire in the trade anyway on a strategy. Um, I have the signal lines. There's my seven small signal line, 21. Something that we added new is traders like to trade different specific times. We know failures uh, really work well. It's been working well on the NASDAQ futures from 9.30 to 11 and from 1.15 to 4 o'clock. So you can dictate when that tr uh, strategy will fire. And there's two set times. Like I have it right here, 1.30 to 4 o'clock, 1.30 to 4 o'clock. But let's say that you want to do... 9.30 to 11, and you just want to do 1 to 4 o'clock. You can put that there, okay? And it will only take uh, trades during that time. So I thought putting two start and stop times, um, I, I got uh, some traders that want to do that. Here's what Phil came up, which I thought was a great idea. It's a kill, kill time and start time. Where you're going to get wiped out with strategies is if you try to trade through news. If you try to trade through news, so uh, we all know to print out, go to forexfactory.com and look at the red impact numbers. Uh, against the USD, forexfactory.com, click the red briefcase, and make sure that no big news coming out. So yesterday, Wednesday and Thursday, we had PPI and CPI coming out at 8.30. So you can do a kill start time and, and stop time. So let's say you're short into the, the news, and the strategy will do at 8.25, it will exit the position at the best available price right at 8.25. So, you know, instead of like holding through news, where the strategy could get beat up, or you know, we don't want to trade that 10-minute window typically. Um, it's a kill time. So if you put it 8:25 and you're short at 8:05, then it's going to uh, uh, exit you out at 8:25 as far as that goes. Okay. So um, I need to test this because I haven't had a trade that happened like that yet. So I'm in the pro and Phil's going to help me test this. But it's how it's coded is it's coded where it will exit the position into the news. Your stop ticks, and this is very important you understand this. That's why we do these conference calls. Let's go stop ticks versus ATR. If you just want the ATR to get you out on the strategies, okay, it will. Your stop must be above your ATR or your strategy will not work. 
So if you are trading whatever RICO size you trade, make sure your hard stop is above your uh, your trail, okay? Or it's not gonna, or this trail is not gonna get you out. All right. So if you have, let's say, um, on the stop ticks, I'm talking about your first targets. That uh, that is, just make sure you don't put a 12 tick stop loss and then have a 25 trail because your stop will activate first. It's it's the best of both worlds. Whatever happens first, stop or ATR. I like having my stop above my initial ATRs. Okay, I have one to four targets. You don't have to trade four contracts. Obviously, you know you come down here to entries per direction, and you click one, and then it'll only get in one contract. Okay, if you click two, two contracts, three, three contracts, so on. All right. So daily goal, daily stop. Uh, some of you wanted this. Let's say you want a daily goal of 300 and a stop of 300, a one to one, or whatever you want to do. The strategy will stop buying and selling. Uh, this is what we're testing now to make sure that that's getting activated. Uh, but that's something I put into the code. Uh, so you can see that pretty much everything streamlined. The only thing I don't have added in this code, I had the kill stop time, which I'm doing this uh, uh, this weekend, is break even plus one. We all know that if you go break even after the first target at four ticks on the city S&P or Nasdaq futures you typically get stopped out on your runner. So I'm giving you guys the option of where the break even comes in at. At the first target, second target, third target, etc. So what I like to do and what I, I, I educate traders, let's say you trade the S&P and let's say you do four contracts for example. The first contract should be four ticks, second contract eight ticks, third 12 ticks, fourth contract is a thousand ticks. So let's say you trade off the 120.20 or the 113.13 off the S&P. Four ticks, eight ticks, 12 ticks, thousand ticks, runner. Break even after eight ticks. What I'm finding is if you break even from all the feedback I get from members, um, uh, if you break even after the first contract that we know, after four ticks, you typically get stopped out on the runner. So this will, be, this will be an option. There'll be a little breakdown below here, which I'm still adding to the code. Um, that will be an option for you to break even after a certain amount. So like I said, on the S&P and the NASDAQ futures, uh, what I educate traders, they, they, if you're doing four contracts, four ticks, eight ticks, 12 ticks, thousand ticks, break even after eight ticks. You sh if the, if, if the S&P is gonna run or the NASDAQ futures is gonna run, it typically will start running right around that eight to 12 tick range if it's gonna start taking off. So if not, it's gonna waffle around a little bit. So I, like, I kinda like the eight tick target as a break even. Um, as far as for that. So the strategy, as you can tell, is the same exact as the indicator. I made it the same way. Same exact way. You notice this code is very streamlined. What, I, what I've done in the past, which I showed all the code about doing this and that, um, I, I, that's all in the background, hit it into the code. Now it's simple toggle switches. If you want to fill your trade and that's all you want to do and you just want that fill your trade to come up, and that's it. Let's say you see a failure trade that's developing uh, like it is on the NASDAQ futures or whatever, or if you find one where you want it to run it from 930 to 11 just to find failure trades. You can do that. The same thing, your initial trail, your trail one and two, you see I had it tight at 25 ticks, and this one I had what at 54, what 58, whatever it was, is that because I have a thousand tick on the runner, your ATR is going to trail that for you, trail price. You know, this is a failure trade that happened yesterday on the S&P. So it's not going to get you in on additional contracts if it's already in a trade unless you have multiple toggle switches that are, are put on. What does that mean? I don't, well, I don't like doing this. I like individual charts set up. I like a failure chart set up individually, a slingshot chart set up, Momo, and then what have you. What happens if you do the other way? Let's say you do the other way. Let's say you do, you come in and you don't want a failure trade. You want to do a slingshot trades only. So let's, let's do slingshot. Now the indicator will just fire the arrows automatically for you, which I just showed you. So now this is only going to take slingshot trades. So now you see it never took the failure trade over here, but now it's taking the slingshot trades. Slingshot trade, slingshot trade. 
Now, and here's another slingshot trade. So wherever the arrows fire on your indicator, I have them uh, mirroring each other where they're, they're going to fire the same spot. Okay, they're going to fire the same spot. So if we go back in and we go to, this is, like I said, yesterday on the S&P, and I'll show you some live arrows pop up on the NASDAQ futures here in a second because it comes up a lot of setups. So let's say that you just wanted a, um, a first wave trades only. Then you click that. Now it's only going to take a first wave. This is the first wave after trend change, first wave after trend change. Let's say if you just want to take a Momo trade, you see I have it set up just like the indicator. The indicator will not fire an alert. So I go first wave. Oops, on the strategy. Say I want a Momo only. Momentum. Now, then the Momo, the, the Momo will fire. Oops, I had them both checked. I had a slingshot check, sorry. So then last one would be the Momo. And now only Momo, momentum trades will fire. Right here is a momentum trade. Okay, so what you want to do then is this. Let's say you what you, you toggle switch all of them, which I don't anticipate you guys doing this. It's up to you, obviously, but it's not going to get you long or short or long more than your original contracts. I don't like doing this. I like to do them individually so you can see them. But it will get all these trades. There's a failure, there's a slingshot, there's a first wave slingshot, failure, first wave slingshot. So it will get all these trades. I like them individually myself, but to each his own, that is available to do that. So like I said, the only thing that I will add into this would be the, um, I do want to add the break even after X amount of targets. I mean, after the second target, or third target, because I just don't want, if you just break even here, on your first target, look what's going to happen. You're getting a lot of break even plus one trades, right? Break even, break even, break even. You see what I mean? Break even, break even after your first targets are hit. Now sometimes there'll be your first two targets hit and then break even. Now if the, if the market is really robust, yes, a runner will run after the first target. I'm not, I'm not saying it can't. I'm just saying a lot of times it doesn't. All right? It just doesn't do that. All right? So you can... I'm going to give you guys the option of doing that as far as that goes. Okay, so let's go. Let's let's say we look at the Nasdaq futures here real quick, and this is the indicator running. Let's look at the indicator on failure trades. So let me pull up the failure trades by itself. So we put up the failure trades by itself on the indicator and hit apply. Now I'm going to show you that the arrow with the sound will only fire when there's a setup or a failure trade. So once like this comes up, let's let it come up real quick. Let's look at live action here. So we had no failure trades on the ES right here. No failure trades. They qualified. NASDAQ has a lot of them, so I'll just pull this up. All right. So let's say that you just want, um, I put the 20 because there's a lot of them fire on the 20 here. One sec. Let's say you just want to look for failure trades. We just had one before this big move up happened on the 20. So remember, if you just want the indicator by itself and not the strategy, you will get the alert system that will alert on your uh, speakers. And you, you can put the wave file where it, so look, this is a big one. See that big move up? That's a nice trade. That just happened this morning. A lot of you guys I envision using the indicator and just watching for the watching for the failure trades to fire off on the indicator. It works very, very well. You know, some of you that want to use a strategy with this, you'll use a strategy with it, but everything is preset already for you. So this is a really nice robust trade as far as that goes. You know, if you use a strategy part of it on this.
This was a failure trade. So you can do the strategy part of it also, but my point is whether you do indicator or strategy, you can dictate what you want to come up. You can dictate what you want to come up as far as um, as far as that goes. You know, I got the uh, this too tight based upon this chart, but it, it will get long and trail based upon your settings that you put in. So it's totally up to you how you guys want to do it. Um, you just have to adjust your, uh, obviously, for the NASDAQ futures, you'll adjust your, your trails and your stops accordingly to the chart that you use. But if you just want to use the indicator, then you look just for failure trades on the NASDAQ. That's it. So what it'll do, it'll only fire arrows on failure trades. There's a failure trade. So you're only going to get failure trades that fire arrows on failure trades. So once a failure trade comes up on that specific Rinko size, then you'll see it fire accordingly to that, okay?